Today we're out here finally looking at the Caltech CMR30. This is a little carbine I've been anxious to see for a long time. Uh, this is the first one I've ever seen actually out in the wild. I've seen some at, at uh, trade shows and things, but I've never never fired one until I got this one in. And it's uh, it's everything I expected it to be. It's a good companion to this uh, PMR30 that I've had. I've had this one for two or three years. I've had a couple more. Got the, the first one I get my hands on several years ago. This is a lightweight, nice pistol, holds 31 shots of 22 Magnum, fully loaded, weighs 19 and a half ounces, which is a good thing. You know, I go out in the woods or something, uh, carry this with me, it's something I can always have on me, you know, 31 shots, I'm going to hit something. So it's good, and a 22 Magnum is a good cartridge. I have a little pistol like that, it penetrates really well. Out of a rifle like this, it's even so much better. Uh, compared to the velocities I got out of the... Uh, PMR pistol, the CMR, got between about 350 and 600 feet per second more velocity depending on which load was using. One of my favorite loads, or my favorite load for this one, is this, uh, that's the Remington, the CCI Maximag. That's a really good hollow point load, 40 grain. By the way, when we're talking about the ammo on this, uh, Caltech recommends using 40 grain high velocity ammunition in this, some good stuff. Uh, the lightweight bullets don't work well. It says in the owner's manual that they don't have enough power to cycle the action. And it's right. I had to try some, and uh, some of them was very accurate, but they don't have enough power to reliably cycle this action. You stick with 40 grain solids or hollow points, you're going to have no problems out of this rifle. I had no problems at all. Run 100% reliable with the 40 grain ammunition. Like I said, the lighter 33 grain bullets such as that didn't have enough power to cycle this action and the the trade-off on those are not as as good as it should be anyway now they uh you get more velocity of that lighter bullet but you don't get enough velocity to make up for the percentage of bullet weight you're, you're losing you're trading bullet weight momentum and penetration for velocity and it's just not a good trade-off in something like this now you get up in a 22 250 220 swift it makes a difference something like this you're just losing power so uh the 22 magnum has been around since 1959. Uh, it's built its reputation on using that 40 grain bullet. Use the solids if you if for something you don't want to trap too much meat on or whatever. If you're a hide hunter, shooting pelts. But for most things that 20 uh, that uh, 22 caliber 40 grain high velocity hollow point will do what you need to, and it works 100% reliable out of this Caltech. Now uh, this is a nice little carbine. It's lightweight. Uh, it weighs under four pounds, uh, empty. The stock on it will telescope six position buck stock. To close it, you push down this ambidextrous lever here. You can set it anywhere in there you want to. But it's really a really handy way to store this. It's, it's nice and short. Uh, the overall length, uh, fully extended, is still under 30 inches. So it's a nice handy carbine. It's got a rail here on the bottom if you want to attack things like lasers, bipod, stuff like that. It comes with this set of fully adjustable Magpul uh, flip-up sights on it. They're really good. I got the scope in the way now. I can't flip it up. I like the scope on here because I shot it for a while with the uh, sights on it, and they work good. But the accuracy of this rifle, this thing is, is max accurate. And to fully, uh, fully use the potential accuracy of it, I got to have a scope. For my accuracy testing on here, I like to see the bullet holes at 100 yards and 50 yards. So what I use for that... The new mule I have here, it's a loophole, it's a VX6, uh, the power on this is adjustable from 7 to 42 power. So I can really crank in there and see how accurate the rifle is going to be. When y'all uh, uh, tune in to watch my videos or read my reviews, you don't want to know how well I can shoot. You want to see what the gun is going to do. And using a, a scope like this, this big 34 millimeter tube, a nice reticle in it, really high definition lens. I can, I can see what those uh, bullets are doing, and I can uh, check out the potential accuracy of any rifle. Of course, for something like this, this scope weighs almost as much as a rifle. For everyday use, I put on a loophole VX1 3x9. I really like that on here. It's going to stay on here. It's not coming off going on another gun. It's going to stay on this little rifle because this is not going back to Caltech. They'll get a check for me or my credit card number, whatever they prefer. I'll send it to them. The magazine on these... They're interchangeable with the PMR30, same mag. They're, uh, uh, they hold 30 rounds, so it gives you a total of 31 with a fully loaded gun on here. Uh, 
the bolt does lock open on the last round. There's a bolt lock right here. It has ambidextrous safeties on it. Right and left side. Two position safety. Ambidextrous button to push down to adjust that stock. It has ambidextrous cocking levers on here and it's not reciprocating so that thing's not going back and forth when you're firing. It does lock open on an empty mag so you know when you're empty because it's hard to count up to 31 shots and keep counting all that stuff. That lets you know when your gun's empty. It has sling attachment points. Got a good comfortable grip on it. Same grip feel as the uh, PMR30. The rail on top is full length. It's easy to disassemble. Uh, one pin right here pushes out or it kind of taps out. It's a pretty tight pin. I tapped it out with a, a punch, pushed it out, and everything slides out of there. So it's easy to take care of. It's uh, like I said, it's, it's reliable, it's accurate. Got a 16 inch barrel on it. Um, don't know what else to tell you about it except it's a good shooting little carbine. I've been waiting for it a long time. Let's talk about trigger pull a little bit. I was surprised at trigger pull. The uh, factory calls for five pound trigger pull, but this one came in at about three and it's really smooth. It's got a little travel to it, about a quarter inch of travel or less, but it's a really smooth trigger pull. Uh, really nice on a gun like this. So it's a handy little carbine that you can uh, uh, easily store, easily keep with you, throw on an ATV, UTV, anything like that, carry it with you. It's a, a good little Predator gun, 22 Magnum. It's not as hot as a 5.56 for a defense gun, but it also don't weigh as much. It's easier to shoot. It's easier for uh, youngsters and, and people that don't have a lot of experience uh, handling ARs and things to operate. It's not that expensive. I think uh, $630 MSRP US. Uh, if you're paying MSRP for something, you know you're, you're not shopping carefully. Uh, they are hard to find, but you can look around. You can find them if you look hard enough. Caltech makes some great stuff. They just can't make enough of them to satisfy the market demand. But they are out there, so... Look around, I was able to get this one. Glad I got it. I've been wanting it for years. It's finally here for self-defense. Uh, 22 Magnum wouldn't be my first choice, but I also wouldn't feel unarmed with this thing. It's, uh, you know, you start poking uh, 40 grain bullets running out of here at about 1,800 feet per second into people, they're gonna change their mind about what they wanna do to you. Uh, for predators, vermin, uh, things like uh, uh, beavers, foxes, coyotes, stuff like that. I wouldn't go real long range on a coyote, but out to 100 yards or so, it works great. Squirrel hunting, things like that, you don't want to squirrel hunt with it. It's going to tear your squirrel all to pieces, not leave enough meat to chew on. Right? Mostly just gravy. But it's a good cartridge, a good uh, carbine, available from a good company, uh, made by Caltech in Florida. A lot of these magazines can be pretty difficult sometimes. I mean, there's, there's 30 shots going into this thing, and it's a double stack magazine tapering up to a single feet at the top, and uh, they can get hard to load. Even in the, the owner's manual, it mentions that. You can you can wear your thumb out loading these things. Nobody, as far as I know, makes a uh, a loader for this. Now, a Maglula won't fit on there. It won't go in there. I thought about modifying my Maglula, but I didn't want to, really want to take a chance of running it. But what I did, I found this up. Uh, Loader for a Glock in my gun room. Got them laying around everywhere. This uh, comes for the Glock uh, 20, 21, uh, the uh, 45, 410, model 30. But anyway, what a, it wouldn't fit on there. But I put a heat gun to the front of it, softened this plastic in the front of it, and that slides right on there. And I push down that follower for you. Even loading all the way up, you push down, thumb one in, push down, thumb one in. And every now and then take it, tap that mag like that when you load it, make sure they're seated really well against the back of that magazine. But that's a cheap, easy way to get you a, a magazine loader, which will really help if you want to load this thing to capacity. Usually I'll load in about 20 or so, because that's enough. But if you want to load it all the way up, get you something like this. It's easy to do, easy to modify, and it makes loading that mag a whole lot easier. It's a real accurate little uh, carbine. What I want you to do, a lot of people just watch the videos, but go over to gunblast.com if you're just watching this video. Go over there and read the review. It talks a lot more about the accuracy and the accuracy potential of this little rifle, the reliability of the different ammo I tried, 
different things like that. So go over there and read the full review on it. Now you'll get a lot more out of that than you'll get out of just watching this video. threaded on this Caltech half a 28 thread so anything that fit a half a 28 you can thread right on there muzzle brakes flash suppressors if you want to or what I like to use is a sound suppressor now this sound suppressor is made for 22 long rifle so it's not uh, not exactly a large enough can as you need to uh, fully suppress this 22 magnum but I could thread a 5.56 can on here but it's so darn big and heavy that it's kind of overkill for something like this. So this attenuates the sound enough that you can shoot without hearing protection. And uh, it, of course, it don't make it completely quiet because it is a supersonic round. You're still going to always get that crack. It's not subsonic loads for it. But it does help using this 22 long rifle can. This is a Cascade can from Tactical Solutions. Threads right on here. Adds just a couple ounces to the weight of it. And I got some bigger cans, some for 5.56. They weigh over a pound. And I don't want to throw it on the end of this little barrel. But we'll shoot a little bit with this uh, uh, can on here and suppress that sound. So. 